Hi, my name is Mahesh Balakrishnan, and I'd like to talk to you today about Telus, a new storage system that my colleagues and I built at Facebook. The Facebook software stack consists of two different layers. On the top, you have a data plane, which consists of services that store and process large amounts of data. And below that, you have a control plane, which consists of infrastructural services that support the data plane with functionality such as scheduling, configuration, naming, and so on. An example control plane service is Twine, which will be presented at this conference. Control plane services are typically stateful, and the state has to reside in some storage system at the bottom of the stack. There are two requirements for the storage system. It has to be exceptionally fault tolerant, since any outage or data loss can affect millions of users. And as part of this requirement, it cannot depend on any other service. Second, our control plane services typically need a rich storage API with support for transactions, secondary indices, and range queries. In 2017, when we started this project, Facebook stored its control plane state in a combination of three different systems. Unfortunately, none of these systems satisfied both requirements. A system like Zookeeper provides extremely high fault tolerance and zero dependency, but has a limited API. Whereas MySQL has a highly expressive API, but cannot match Zookeeper's fault tolerance. In addition, modifying one of these systems to satisfy both requirements turned out to be difficult due to the monolithic design of these systems where the database is intertwined with the consensus logic. It's hard to add general purpose transactions to a system like Zookeeper or to run a custom consensus protocol like Zab under MySQL. So our problem statement in 2017 was to build a new system that was both fault tolerant and had a rich API. And as our control plane was evolving rapidly, we had to hit production with this system within months. To achieve this goal, we built Delis using a shared log design. In Delis, each server stores a local copy of the full database. This database is kept consistent via appends and reads on a shared log. This approach is based on a body of research over the last decade that shows that the shared log effectively acts as an API for consensus, hiding the complexity of consensus from the database. I'll now describe the database layer and then talk about how we realize this shared log. Each Delis server consists of two layers, a Delis runtime at the bottom that interacts with the shared log and a top layer that exposes a particular API to clients, in this case, a table. When the client issues a put against the table, the Delis table layer relays it to the runtime which appends it to the log without executing it. The update is then played back by the server in the shared log's total order and applied to the local copy of state. What is stored in the shared log is a logical command, for example, a conditional put against the table store. There are two key points in this slide. First, the logic above the shared log is simple, consisting of appends and reads and yet it provides linearizable consistency. Second, the bottom half of the stack, the runtime and the log, is oblivious to the table API. We can support an entirely different API, for example, Zookeeper, simply by changing the top layer. A shared log design allowed us to hugely simplify Delis by outsourcing all the complexity of consensus to a shared log. But to deploy the system, we still needed an actual shared log implementation. In v1, we cheated. We used Zookeeper as our shared log by mapping log entries to keys. This enabled us to reach production really quickly, and it was a very reliable solution. However, due to the impedance gap between the log API and the Zookeeper API, it was a very inefficient and slow solution. Further, Delis was not zero dependency, which means that we did not satisfy our initial goal. To meet that goal of building a zero dependency service, 
we needed to replace our zookeeper based log with a native log implementation. This raised two questions. Given that a shared log is equivalent to consensus and consensus is notoriously complex, how do we build a native log? And second, even if we somehow did build such a log, how would we upgrade our deployed instances to use it without any downtime? The answer to both these questions turned out to be virtual consensus, a new technique that we developed in Delos. In virtual consensus, we virtualize the shared log. The database runs over a virtual log, which is a shared log that is mapped to underlying physical logs that we call loglets. A loglet exposes a shared log API with an addition of a seal command. Once sealed, the loglet stops accepting appends. The virtual log stores the mapping from the address space to underlying loglets in a metastore, which is simply a versioned key value pair. To change this mapping, we follow a simple protocol. We seal the current loglet, we write a new mapping to the metastore, and then we route new appends to a new loglet. This new loglet can be an entirely different log implementation. For example, here we switch from using Zookeeper to an external log service called log device. In effect, we can completely change the consensus subsystem without any downtime. At this point, we had the ability to deploy a new protocol without downtime, but we still needed to come up with a native loglet implementation. We needed a protocol with three properties. It has to be simple, fast, and fault tolerant. It's easy to get any two of these properties, but not all three. With virtual consensus, we divide and conquer. The virtual log and its metastore is simple and fault tolerant, while the loglet itself is simple and fast. The loglet does not implement fault tolerant consensus. A single machine failure can make it unavailable. Instead, it implements a fault tolerant seal. When a loglet becomes unavailable, the virtual log simply seals it and switches to a different loglet. The only source of consensus is the metastore storing the mapping to the loglets. In essence, we implemented reconfiguration once in the virtual log, and we use it for all types of failures, not just for switching between entirely different loglet types, but also for switching between different instances of the same loglet type. As a result, we avoid the need for any kind of reconfiguration or leader election within the loglet. Now this sounds great in principle, but how do we realize this split in practice? For the Metastore, we can simply use multiple instances of Lamport's original single decree Paxis protocol, which is really compact and simple. All of the complexity comes from the multi Paxis performance optimizations, which we can completely avoid for the Metastore, since it is only triggered on reconfigurations. For the loglet, we designed a new custom protocol called the native loglet. In the native loglet, each Dallas server runs the Dallas runtime, which is the client for the shared log, as well as a log server component. One of the servers acts as a sequencer. In this picture, we have three machines, each acting as both a client and a log server for the native loglet. To append to the native loglet, a client forwards the update to the sequencer, which then goes to the log servers and waits for a majority of replies. This is a fast operation, but it's not fault tolerant. The loglet becomes unavailable for upends if the sequencer goes down. To check the tail of the log, the client goes directly to the log server and waits for a quorum to respond. Since the sequencer is not involved, check tail is fault tolerant. After a check tail, the client on the server can read committed entries directly from its local log server. If the server running the sequencer fails, the native loglet is wedged. Any client can now seal the native loglet by sending a seal command to the quorum. The seal is idempotent. Multiple clients can seal at the same time. Note that the native loglet as described is converged. The log servers run on the same machines as the Delis runtime. 
but the native loglet can also be disaggregated running on entirely different machines. In production, we use the native loglet in converged mode. Now that we have a native zero dependency loglet and the ability to deploy it without downtime, these graphs show the native loglet going live for the first time on a production cluster. We are showing latency on four different types of Dell stable operations. Midway through each graph, we make the switch to native loglet from the Zookeeper based loglet. And latency drops dramatically while the service does not experience any unavailability. Accordingly, Virtual consensus allowed us to change the consensus subsystem on the fly. As we said before, Dallas loglets can be converged or disaggregated. In a converged setup with the native loglet, each server runs both the database and the native loglet log server. This has the benefit of enabling fate sharing between the database and the log. The log cannot fail independently of the DB. Or in other words, the DB does not have an external dependency. In a disaggregated setup, the log runs across the network on a separate set of servers. This allows the IO of the log and the DB to be separated physically. It also enables each tier to be scaled independently. In production, we typically run in converged mode since our target applications need a zero dependency store. There is, however, one exception. The DB tier needs only one replica to be alive, while the log needs a full majority. Sometimes, if enough DB replicas fail, we're, lose, we're close to losing quorum on the co-located log, which can result in data loss. In such situations, which happen often in production, we can decouple the log from the database by reconfiguring to an external log. If the application is okay with the dependency implications, the performance win for a disaggregated log can be quite high. On some workloads and configurations, we got up to a 10x performance improvement for throughput. Virtualizing the log API also enables RAID-like composition of logs. A striped loglet is a particular loglet implementation which is composed of other underlying loglets. When a client appends to the striped loglet, the append is routed round robin to one of the underlying stripes. In this example, we see entry zero in the striped loglet go to position zero on the leftmost loglet. One goes to the middle loglet two goes to the rightmost loglet, and then three wraps around to the leftmost loglet. Note that each client is appending independently, so a different client can follow a different round robin schedule, in which case it can create holes in the striped loglet's address space. To provide linearizability, we do not acknowledge an entry in the striped loglet until all holes before it are filled. So in this case, we wait for positions four and five in the striped loglet, to be filled before acknowledging position six. The underlying stripes can be any loglet implementation. For example, they could be three native loglets with identical memberships, but different sequencers. This allows us to emulate a rotating sequencer protocol where there's no single sequencing bottleneck. Or the loglets could also be completely independent with no overlap in membership. In this mode, the stripe loglet allows us to scale the throughput of the log via sharding. For example, we can obtain over a million appends per second by striping across 30 different native loglets on a 90 machine cluster. One final detail about the virtual log relates to trimming. The virtual log exposes a first class trim command. This gets relayed to the underlying loglets. And if a loglet is empty, then we change the mapping to remove it. But an alternative to leverage is to leverage the mapping itself to construct an infinite log. In this case, rather than trim and remove underlying loglets, we simply copy cold parts of the log over to a different loglet implementation, and we then remap the virtual log address space to point to a new loglet. By doing this, we can enable features such as fine-grained point-in-time restore. 
In the opposite direction, virtualization also gives us a powerful tool for deletion. In existing consensus protocols, it can be quite difficult to undo a consistent decision once it has been taken. With virtualization, we can simply edit the mapping to remove an entry. This is particularly helpful in production settings where a poison pill entry can cause a hang or a repeated crash across all database replicas playing the entry. In summary, our original goal was to build a zero dependency fault tolerant system with a rich API and to do it in months. We achieved the rich API via the Dallas table layer, fault tolerance via a shared log design, and we hit production in months by using Zookeeper as our ordering mechanism. Later, we got to zero dependency by building and deploying the native loglet. So virtual consensus in Dallas allowed us to achieve our original goal with a lot of success. Dallas has now been in production for over two years and serves nearly 2 billion transactions per day. But beyond that, virtual consensus also enabled new capabilities. We can add new APIs in Dallas very easily. For example, we're working on a prototype Zookeeper API. We can also add new loglets to Dallas easily. For instance, we have experimental log device-based loglet as well as the striped loglet. In essence, Dallas acts as an extensible platform that enables rapid innovation. We can try out new APIs and new ordering mechanisms without rewriting the entire system from scratch. To conclude, Dallas is the bottom turtle of the Facebook stack. We virtualized consensus to enable faster development and deployment. In the bigger picture, virtualization enables production systems like Dallas to immediately benefit from cutting edge research. And on the flip side, it allows research to have immediate impact and validation within real world systems. Finally, the reason we called our system Dallas is that it's an island near Paxos, which is the name of the famous consensus protocol as well as Corfu, one of the first shared log systems. Thank you very much for listening to this talk.